Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. This morning, I'm going to talk about something very serious with many of you, and that is your Facebook addiction. And I'm going to explain to you how you can kick your Facebook addiction in five steps with a crayon. And yes, you do need a crayon, okay? And I'm not gonna, this is a very serious topic. I had no clue how many people out there were concerned with their Facebook addiction until I talked about how my wife has kind of gotten over hers uh, in a video yesterday. I was happy to see how many people mentioned in the comments section that they too stopped using Facebook either recently or some time ago. They shared some ways in which how they did it, um, but, but I was kind of saddened to see how many people also mentioned in the comments section that they would love to kick their Facebook addiction. They've tried, but they just have not been successful in doing so. So. I'm going to share with you five steps, uh, successful steps in kicking your Facebook addiction with a crayon. Uh, and unlike the um, the annoying neighbor crayon video thing, I'm not going to make you wait 14 and a half minutes into an 18 and a half minute long video before I explain what I do with the with the crayon. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need the crayon for now up front, so you'll know. And this video is not going to be nearly as long as the annoying neighbor video. I hope. Uh, but you need the crayon for step four. A pen won't work, a pencil won't work, and you'll understand why soon. Now, step one, guys, and this comes from personal experience. My experience, my wife's experience, I stopped using Facebook years ago on a personal level. I stopped using it about a year ago on a you know social media professional level. I am done with it completely. Um, here's what I learned as far as beating that addiction. The five steps, five things you got to do. Number one, just stop. This is not a joke. I'm being serious. Just stop. Quit cold turkey the same way you would quit most drugs, uh, in the same way you would quit alcohol, nicotine, tobacco, cigarettes, all these things. Just stop. Now, I know you're going to be tempted to go on there and save images. Um, you're going to be tempted to announce that, guys, I'm going to be leaving Facebook. I'm spending too much time here. You've probably done this before. You've probably said, oh, I'm going to take a break. Don't worry about me. You might not see me for the next 30 days. I'm just taking a break from Facebook because it's consuming too much time. Maybe you've made it 30 days, maybe you haven't, but if you're watching this video, maybe it's because you've gone back. Um, I hope a lot of you watching are still in remission from your Facebook addiction like me and, and my wife. But uh, listen, when I left Facebook, I, I tried this. I did the announcement. I said, guys, here's my email address. I put it out there and I said, I'm quitting Facebook because it's a major time suck. It's stealing time away from me and the things I want to do. It's taking time away from my family. Um, and we all know that we befriend people who may or may not be who they say they are. Um, I was done. And so I said, here's my email address. Send me an email. So I have yours because I'm leaving Facebook. I had 2000 friends, friends, you know how many people emailed me? Zero, zero. Everybody said, oh, bye, we'll miss you. You know what, guys? Don't even waste your time sending that message out because y it might be a little bit uh, unsettling when you realize that nobody really cares. The fact is, people who often are chatting with you on Facebook are doing it because they're on Facebook because they're bored. At the same time, you're on Facebook and you're bored. And you guys will chat and you'll help each other waste a lot of time. So just stop. Get off. Okay. Number two, I made a list. And trust me, you're going to understand step four just by taking a quick glance at this list right now, why, why, why you need the crayon. Number two, get busy. Okay, the biggest danger with Facebook or one of the biggest problems with Facebook is it is just such a massive time suck. Not only does it steal your relationships from you, your real world relationships with real friends, real family members, it takes your time. And guys, I mentioned in a video the other day, we're all given a 24 hour nugget of gold every day and that is 24 hours over the next, which is the day. How do we spend it? How much of that golden nugget are you spending on fake book, which is what I call it, fake book, because so much about it is fake. So get busy. You're going to find, and I'm reading here, you're going to find all this time, what might seem like too much time, which is a danger of relapsing. Do anything. Just get busy. Clean house. Go for a walk. Read. A dress outfit here. Oh, okay. 
For those of you who are loyal, faithful subscribers and who have been with us for a while, you're probably saying at this point in the video, if not before, Crazy Lake, why are you wearing a blazer and a nice sweater and a button down shirt underneath it all? Where's your cap that says UVA or Virginia or has a big V? Where's your hoodie or your t-shirts that says Virginia something, Cavaliers, baseball, rowing, something, track and field? We know you wear all that UVA stuff, not just because you live in Charlottesville and you support the home team, but because you're thrifty and you like to shop at the thrift store and you buy those $80 hoodies for $2.99 at the thrift store. Why are you dressed the way you are now? Well, guys... Um, I came up with this idea of some of the things my, my beautiful bride and I like to do when we have time in a little bit of extra money, just 20 bucks each. We like to go to the thrift store with 20 bucks and see what we can get. My list was full and I didn't have room to write that, so I just wrote a dress outfit here. Okay, this is a Joseph A. Bank blazer. I don't know if we can see the tag. Ugh. Let's see if I can prove it. Can you read that? I can't read it from my angle, but this is Joseph A. Bank. The sweater, Joseph A. Bank. And this shirt, button down, Joseph A. Bank. Um, this sweater, okay, all three of these we bought at the thrift store for $2.99 each. So I'm wearing like $10 worth of clothes here on top. Um, okay, the sweater still had tags on it. It was brand new when I bought it at the, at the store. It was like, and this was two years ago. It was either $85 or $185. I can't remember. But I'm wearing several hundreds dollars worth of clothes right here that I got at the thrift store for 10 bucks. That's something you can do with your time. It's fun. So no loyal, faithful subscribers. I have not lost my mind because I'm sitting up here with my crayon again wearing Joseph A. Banks clothes. I can assure you I am I I'm still wearing my pajama pants and my farming boots. I'm perfectly sane. All right, next three. Read. I started to say read. That's a whole nother entity in and of itself. I know that many of our subscribers are avid readers. They love to read. I love to read. I love to read. I love to write. And uh, that's what, you know, my time. Uh, spent writing and reading was being totally monopolized by my Facebook addiction. So look, I put read here for so many reasons, not just because it's one of my passions and I think it's so important, but um, I've been mentioning in a couple of videos here in the last few days, I'm watching this interview with Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan show. Um, and, and I want to point out there, I, my mind is still not entirely made up on my any opinion of this guy. What I know is that He's got one of the great minds of our time, and he's got one of the great minds of history. And I like to see what is it that makes people with great minds tick. And there's a commonality that I have found, and that is reading, okay? Um, it's a two hour and 37 minute long interview, and I'm a little more than an hour into it. I actually got kind of, today I stopped watching it. It went directly to an Elon Musk documentary because every time Musk gets ready to make like some sort of profound statement, in this interview in which I'm really going to gain some insight into his mind. No offense, Joe Rogan. I know you could beat me up. You're an MMA guy and all that stuff. Joe Rogan just goes off on a tangent about women and girls and, and their body parts and stuff. And I'm like, man, Elon Musk, one of the great minds of our time, was getting ready to tell us how he thinks or why he thinks the way he does. And you're talking about this. So I went straight to a documentary. I think it was on YouTube. It was called something like um, How I Became the Modern Day Iron Man. And Elon Musk, at the beginning, talks about his, his passion of reading. When he was young, he read every comic book he could get, every comic book he could read in the store before they kicked him out. He read so many books, he ran out of books. He, he lived in the library reading book after book after book after book. And when he was 10 years old, he wanted to start working with um, computers. And he took like an aptitude test with IBM, and he tested higher than any of their engineers or something like that. And so he developed a, a video game at 12 years old and sold it. But the thing about reading is, guys, uh, I'm reading a novel now. I'm, yeah, I'm still reading it on Thomas Jefferson. He read five hours a day when he was in his youth and when he was a college student. If you look at the great minds throughout time and throughout history, most of them, one of the commonalities is that they loved to read and they did it a lot. So all this time you're wasting on fake book, put a book in your hand. And here's an even better idea. You're probably watching this video on a handheld device or a laptop. This is also the device that you use when you go down that rabbit hole, that cyber hole, and waste all your time on fake book. Go to Amazon and upload the free Kindle reading software to your device. It's free. Amazon also has a list of hundreds, if not thousands, of free eBooks. And now look, it's not just that self-published stuff where people don't know where to use punctuation and capitalize sentences at the beginning of and I'm a self-published author guys so I'm kind of taking a jab at myself here and uh, okay 
there are hundreds of classics whose copyrights had expired and, and the writer or the author had never done their proper estate planning, so nobody inherited the copyrights to their books. For example, um, The Red Badge of Courage. You can read many of these classics for free in Kindle format with the free Kindle reading software that you can upload for free on your handheld device or your laptop. Get to it. Read. Okay? Because you're going to have a lot of time to kill. Now, number four, this is something you've not done for years and a lot of you have never done it at all. List your goals. With all this time you have to do now, how are you going to fill that time? Okay? And this is where the crayon comes in into play. When you make your goals, use a crayon. Don't use a pen. Don't use a pencil because pens and pencils are too fine tipped. You will be able to list a hundred different things and you won't accomplish any of them. You'll become overwhelmed. You'll look at your, at your list and you'll say, oh my gosh, I can't do all those things. And you may even relapse and go back to using Facebook because it just seems too daunting a task and, and too hopeless. Use a crayon because you'll run out of room. And you'll have to talk about why you're wearing a crazy outfit up in a hayfield. Well, what used to be a hayfield, which is now allowed to go, being allowed to go fallow and becoming a beautiful forest once again. <clears throat> we all know that story, right? Okay, and then number five. And guys, this is the beauty of it all. If you implement these first four steps, number five will come natural. Reconnect. Reconnect with loved ones, real loved ones, in face-to-face, -face, real time. Reconnect with real friends, people you actually know out here in the physical realm. Make new friends. But most importantly, reconnect with yourself. <sighs> Guys, I wrote this. This is, this is my writing. These are all my thoughts. Trust me, you've lost a lot of yourself to that cyber hole. Your thoughts and your lifestyle have been influenced by that with which you've been inundated, okay? You will, in time, find that you like the real you more than all the fake everything else on Fakebook. Guys, it works. I quit years ago. I quit entirely, even from a you know social media business standpoint, uh, using Fakebook about a year ago. I made the video yesterday about how my wife quit about 10 days ago because they wanted her to verify her account, and we just decided not to. You know, her name's different. She's been married since she started that account. And I said, honey, just don't. What happens if you just don't? And in 10 days or so, she's got less anxiety, uh, l no mood swings. She's, she's more at peace. She's more relaxed. She's more content. And, and she was already spending a ton of time with me and our son. She's spending even more with us now. So, guys... That is five ways in which you can kick your Facebook addiction with a crayon. You really do need a crayon for step number four. I hope you give it a try if this is something that is of concern to you. I promise you, life is better when you take your life back and you live out here in the real world. So thanks for being with me here for another video from Homesteading Off the Grid and me and my $10 Joseph A. Bank outfit that probably would have cost three or 400 had I bought it new and my pajama pants pajama pants and farmer boots are going to stand up and give you another beautiful parting shot of the homestead see you for more next time